so generative ai is taking the world by storm and guess what we have the 26 year old founder of chat sonic samanyu garg with us today welcome samanyu to the thank show thank you very much nice to be here samanyu uh, tell me uh, let's start with your journey with chat sonic how did it uh, how did you actually get onto the ai bandwagon right so i i have been into tech since i was like um, probably like 10 12 years of age so started out quite early. I used to build lots of websites, apps, those kinds of things. Went to the UK uh, for my graduation back in 2015. In my third year, I got very interested in AI. That is when deep learning was getting really popular. Andrew NG, his courses were getting really popular. So that is how I started with. Um, in my fourth year, did a research paper on group emotion recognition using machine learning, where you could feed in a group image of a group of people, and it would identify the overall emotion for that uh, image there. That is how it started out, got very intrigued there, got a Global Undergraduate Award for that, which is also known as the Junior Nobel Prize. And um, then I was working in Deloitte, uh, London for one and a half years. There we were working on cutting edge AI technology. And I, I launched this application, which was called TLDR This. That's like one of the most popular AI summarization tools on the internet. So that is how it started out. At that time, generative AI, it was not GPT and all these models. It was BART, BERT, these kinds of models. That is how it all started out. Um, and that is when we launched first version of uh, Right Sonic. That's the name of the company. And yeah, since then we have been focused on AI powered content creation, all sorts of cutting edge uh, generative AI models. So Sam, uh, Right Sonic or Chat Sonic is uh, dubbed to be a chat GPT alternative. So tell me about the differences between those two. Right, so when ChatGPT came out, even though generative AI has been there for the last, you know, six, seven years, what really made it accessible to such a wider audience is the conversational UX, which is how, you know, everyone is familiar with WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger, all these kinds of things. And that is what really made hundreds of millions of people to actually understand the value behind it and really get the idea behind it. So that is where when ChatGPT launched, we, we found it very intriguing. So that is where we wanted to build something like, you know, an improved version of Chat GPT, little bit more focused towards content creation. The idea behind Chat Sonic is to have a very sort of um, like an improved version of Chat GPT, which companies, which, you know, individuals can use for better research for, you know, um, content creation where you know exactly where that information came from, because we give references, citations to every piece of information there. So that was the, the idea behind that, yeah. So with Right Sonic, Chat Sonic, what kind of traction are you seeing? Because Chat GPT is viral. Right. Everybody talks about Chat GPT, and even we are using it yep. in our content creation programs. What kind of traction did you get with Right Sonic and Chat Sonic? So we are, you know, we are a multi-million dollar revenue making company. We are a profitable company. And we have like, you know, about more than 30,000 30, paying users. We have lots of big brands who are using our tool, lots of individuals, freelancers, agencies, even, you know, media publications use it. So very good traction, I would say, but we are still just getting started. Uh, it's just like the tip of the iceberg right now. We'll only expand going forward when, when more use cases are uncovered, essentially. Okay, Sam. Uh... While ChatGPT is viral, while generative AI is taking over, there's a lot of a lot of people have a fear of, uh, and this has been spoken about a lot, that AI will replace jobs, which it will. But what is your point of view on this? So from my point of view, AI is still not there yet. Where it would replace humans, it would rather augment humans there. So I think how it was probably 10, 15 years back when internet came out, everyone used to think that, okay, internet, you know, e-commerce will, will replace my job or, or will take away my business. But that is not the case. Now, if you've seen during COVID time, especially, um, those kind of brick and mortar stores, when they started going online, they were actually making more money. They were making more profit there. And it, was also, it also diversifies their uh, kind of sources of income and, you know, all that. So from my understanding, it would basically, people who make the best use of AI, they would be ahead as compared to other people, but it would basically create new jobs. It will uh, kind of um, get like motivate people to learn and pick up AI as a tool to further increase their productivity. So it would be more like a productivity tool, I would say, rather than replacing jobs per se. So Sam, uh, while there are a lot of positive uses for uh, generative AI, right. but as we see with all technologies, threat actors are also using uh, generative AI to 
say generate a phishing mail that's very simple but uh, as generative ai can also write code right. they are also writing malware and everything what are your thoughts on this uh, and how are you trying to prevent this happening on your platform right so it's it's a definitely a valid concern there um in terms of automated systems to you know stop these kinds of things you know of course there's a lot of research and work going on there where you know, we have toxicity filters in place where we can filter down any hate speech or any you know political kind of uh, kind of propaganda kind of stuff that people are trying to do so all that we are working on of course it's not 100% accurate yet it would take time to get it to that level of accuracy there so a bunch of different things going on you know definitely in terms of code in terms of training the ai model to understand these kinds of bad practices so we are able to kind of train the model so that it understands in things from perspective of a hacker there and then um, kind of Uh, ignores that question straight away rejects that okay i can't answer that question because that's against my values and my you know policies there so that is something work is going on you know uh, of course it's a kind of in development in terms of the the accuracy itself so as we move forward as the developments keep uh, going on it would definitely improve that but i wouldn't say it's like 100% secure uh, at the moment yeah so with chat gpt uh, there have been uh, you know instances where it has actually given a wrong citation right yeah it hallucinates right. so how are um, you know you trying to work on uh, right sonix uh, you know sources of information and the correct citations how are you working on those that's a very important question because you know any kind of content that any uh, kind of company is producing let's say they need it to be factual they need to be consistent there so i think two ways we do it one is that we are integrated with multiple different search platforms like google bing all of these and what we do is essentially um, for a given topic we see the search results from google you know which are the top ranking search results now if you know every website has a authority associated with it like for for example times now would have a higher authority than some uh, you know lower media publication or some random site or or even like you know some blog kind of thing right so we basically have a system where based on the authority of that site uh we extract information from the top few sites you know we get that information there we kind of do a similarity match where we check okay this information has been covered in five of these authority sites and based on that then we use that information give citation from where that information came from so that is one second for brands what we are doing is brands can bring in their own data their own content so let's say for example times now has you know previous articles previous reports that you guys have written all that can be fed in and it will try to kind of create content that borrows from your own data and then reference back the data from where it came from so that we you know exactly where it came from you have the citations and everything so i think that is how it is it will it is going to be going forward there yeah, yeah absolutely and uh, let's talk about prompt engineering yeah. everybody has been talking about prompt engineering and uh, generative ai is massive but it's only as good as your prompt is right so what are your thoughts on prompt engineering becoming actually a job i think prompt engineering if you see from 2020 to now it has improved a lot earlier you used to write like very big prompts with lots of examples uh, in there but now even like you give two liners and it is able to give you some decent quality output so i think going forward in the next year or two the the prompt engineering aspect would itself become easier as the model models kind of advance further so that is one aspect there apart from that yeah for specific use cases you know um there are people now you know companies hiring these specific prompt engineer itself it's a new job itself and people are hiring and even i think one of the jobs i saw where someone was paying like 350000 dollars for a prompt for a prompt engineering job there so i think it would be a probably going to be a new job where your job is to make sure the prompts are good and what you mentioned about security as well right make sure that no one can do a prompt injection attack and all of these aspects there so it's yeah definitely it's it's going to be a big one uh, in the coming months and years so let's talk about the new features that you have in pipeline like chat gpt plus it has now it features plugins it right. features uh, web browsing what new features are uh, is going to come to right sonic and chat sonic right so a bunch of them lots of different ones in plan one of them you mentioned plugins that something like that we are, we are building our own chat sonic app store where any of the plugins that are on chat gpt would automatically be supported in our app store so think of it like how android and ios kind of are um apart from that you know we are also building our own plugins there second very important bit for brands is 
where they can bring in their own content, their own previous content, their data points, and use that to produce new content there. So any kind of, let's say, questions you're asking on um, you know, the, the interface, it basically, instead of hallucinating information, it reads from your own content, from your own data points, and produces content based on that. That's the second thing. Third thing is, ever since we launched Chatsonic, different brands like you know, all over the world have reached out to us where they want their own custom Chatsonic kind of thing, which is trained on their own data. That is the next big thing where we have this uh, platform called Botsonic, where companies can come and feed their own data points, their own you know, links, knowledge base, all of these things. And then they get their own no-code chatbot out of that, that they can plug in their own website and they can use both internally for their employees or they can also put it externally, like you know how, how you have chatbots right now, they're dumb chatbots, they're rule-based chatbots. But with these chat GPT-like chatbots, it's very personalized to the end user and kind of gives very, very interesting responses there. So I think those are the couple of things that we are working on going forward there. Since you are from India and you started this, any collaborations or any work that you're doing India specific with right, Sonic and Chatsonic? So India definitely, it's a, it's a big market, of course. For us, you know, we are like most of our team is based out of India. So we are building for the world from India, right? And in terms of having generative AI in India, I think in India currently there's no large language models as such, which India has developed. So I think that is going to be the next big thing where, you know, even we are working on our own large language models, you know, others are also working there. And there's a huge amount of computational talent in India. That is not being utilized properly there. So that is our aim to build these large language models, which are trained on Indian languages, first of all, and then also for some of the use cases like where we train on Indian kind of context specific data and is able to create content in the context of the Indian consumer or the Indian you know, uh, persona there. So I think that is what we are working on. Uh, definitely uh, takes time to build large language models, you know, training time and all that. So, but, but yeah, I think, a lot of companies we speak with in India, we are collaborating also with, with a couple of them where we are helping a lot in the e-commerce industry where we are producing product descriptions for them or we are helping you know agencies automate their content, you know, simplify their content creation. Media publications, we are helping to produce more amounts of um, reports and articles on a daily basis. So a lot of these different um, factors there, I would say. Great. So now, uh, what's your message to people who are actually scared of uh generative AI, you know, and scared of uh, generative AI taking up their jobs yeah. and also not understanding what it is. I think my point would, everyone has used ChatGPT or a similar platform to some extent. So it's more of a productivity booster rather than like, a, you know, something that will take away the job. And uh, just like with internet, the, the earlier you pick up something and you kind of start using it and bring it into your daily workflows, the better it would be, you know, it would help you out as well. So any kind of job, whether you're writing emails or whether you are, you know, doing research, any kind of job, if you use AI, your 60, 70% of the time gets saved there. And you can, if let's say if you are a freelancer, you can pick up more projects, more clients. If you are working in a company, you know. Let me ask you one thing. Do you think AI, using AI for work is cheating? I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. There's so many companies right now who are uh, buying chat Sonic or chat GPT subscriptions for their employees, right? Now, for me, I'll talk from my perspective. So I'm, you know, so I'm founder, you know, for my company, um, let's say when we are building software, right? Why would I spend one week in building some piece of some feature with some person who doesn't use AI, which I can get done along with AI in four hours, right? So that saves me money, saves me time for that person also. It saves them frustration, you know, in terms of constantly debugging the code and all that. So it's definitely for everyone's benefit. It, it's it's kind of a boon, I would say. So everyone needs to pick it up, you know, expand their skill sets. And that's how, you know, it will be going forward. The, the earlier you pick, the better you'll be, you know, placed going forward. Yeah. So uh, Sam, tell me what does the future of AI look like from your point of view. Right. And the second part is, uh, what's next for Right Sonic? Right, so what does the future look like? It's, it's very hard to tell, even for me, because things that you would have imagined to happen in five years are happening in five weeks, right? There's so much development happening in the AI space. Every day you check Twitter, there's something new coming out. 
but i think from my perspective multi model ai that would be one big thing where from the same um, system or the same interface you can work with all the different forms of content or different forms of um, you know file types and everything there so that is one thing second thing apart from that would also be you know everyone would sort of have their own personalized uh, chatbot or personalized ai for them so think of it like a personal gpt which as an individual it's trained on your previous emails your whatsapp messages all of those things and it acts as your own digital clone right for companies it would be their digital clone for their brand where it understands like you know there's a gpt for every company which is trained on their own writing style their own data points and everything and it is able to kind of help out the employees of that company in any aspect related to that company right so i think those two would be the next big things multi model ai and sort of the digital clones for companies as well as for individuals that yeah. something like iron man something like iron man maybe not that advanced in terms of robots <laughs> and stuff but yeah the assistant definitely yeah, the assistant. um yeah that's what i would say great great it was great chatting with you sam thank you very much all the best all, for your thanks for having me here